Determine the number of terms in the sequence, 9, 27, 81, and then it looks like the last term is 729. So first we want to establish the pattern, so we know whether this represents an arithmetic or a geometric sequence. So from 9 to 27 and then 27 to 81, it looks like we're multiplying by 3. So this tells me two things. First, it tells me that the sequence is definitely geometric, and then it also tells me the common ratio, what I'm multiplying by repetitively, is r equals 3. So with this information, we can go ahead and write a general formula for this sequence of numbers. So knowing that it's geometric, we have a general formula for any geometric sequence, which is a sub 1 is or excuse me, a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r raised to the n minus 1 power. And we know the first term is 9. The r value, the common ratio, is 3. So that would be 9 times 3 raised to the n minus 1 power. Now, in this case, we're trying to find the number of terms in the sequence. So what that really means is we are trying to solve for n n represents the number of terms. But we are given the last term in the sequence, which is 729. So we can go ahead and substitute 729 in for a sub n, the last term of the sequence, and then just solve for n. And that will tell us which term that is. Now, of course, we could certainly get out our calculators and continue multiplying by 3 repetitively until we eventually land on 729. But as my college professor of math would say, that wouldn't be a very elegant solution. So we're trying to be more efficient. So what we have here is an equation we need to solve, and this is actually an exponential equation. So we want to work to isolate the exponential piece of this equation. So that means the exponential piece, if I highlight that for you, that would be the 3 raised to the n minus 1 power. So therefore, we need to divide both sides by 9 so we can isolate the exponential quantity. 729 divided by 9 will give us 81. So 81 is equal to 3 raised to the n minus 1 power. Now, my base on the right-hand side is 3. So on the left-hand side, I can rewrite 81, so that is also base 3, because 81 is actually 3 raised to the fourth power. So if I rewrite 81 as 3 to the 4th, that equals 3 raised to the n minus 1 power. And now I have achieved common bases on both sides. And this is called the uniqueness property. When the bases are the same, the exponents must be equal. So 4 must equal n minus 1, which means n is equal to 5. So this tells us that there are a total of 5 terms in this sequence which we could certainly validate by just multiplying by 3 repetitively. But again, this is the process we would use, especially if the last term was a really ugly number, maybe a very, very small decimal, or maybe a very, very large number. It would not be very efficient to multiply by 3 repetitively 29 times, let's say, if we were looking for the 29th term. Now, let me back up and mention, if you did not notice that you could get common bases at this point in your process, so let me just mention, if you had 81 is equal to 3 raised to the n minus 1 power, and you didn't happen to realize that the bases could be the same, you could also solve this equation using your knowledge of logarithms. So if your mind went to logarithms, that's okay too. This equation written in logarithmic form would be log base 3 of 81 is equal to n minus 1. So if we added 1, n would equal log base 3 of 81 plus 1. However, log base 3 of 81 ends up being 4, and 4 plus 1 still gives us a final answer of 5. So I think it's much more efficient to do it the way we have on the left, but if you didn't realize you could get a common base, you could certainly solve this using logarithms the way we have on the right.